Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer McGuire. So glad you're here. Today, I am so excited for a few reasons. First, I get to share with you a close look at the new Concord and Ninth color release. And I have favorite color combos from some of your favorite artists to share, along with a bunch of cards. I also have tips and ideas for creating your own ink swatch and cardstock swatches, how to organize them and keep track of some favorite color combos. Also, we'll be some doing some creating. I have a new way to use Concord and Ninth turnabout stamps. We got a lot to cover, so let's go ahead and jump in. I will start by showing how I create swatches and give you more information about the new 25 colors from Concord and Ninth. First up, I'll be using some new color swatch products from Concord and Ninth. There are the Swatchbook dies on the left and the Swatchbook stamp set on the right. Ignore the packaging, this is from something else, but it's the same products. Now, you could use whatever you may have on hand to create your own swatches. You can cut them on your own, use small rectangle dies, tag dies. You can also just write the name of the inks by hand if you don't want to use a stamp set. But you'll see how these were very convenient today in creating ink and cardstock swatches. Let's start with the ink swatches. Now there are a few ways you can make ink swatches. I will uh, talk about this in this video. I'm still using my free ink swatch downloads that I have on my blog. I even have them for these new Concord and Ninth inks and all the other popular inks on the market. I'll have a link below. So off screen, I printed and cut all of my ink swatches, and now I'm starting to stamp on them. I'm using the solid rectangle stamp from the swatch book stamp set that I showed you earlier. It's perfect for getting a good representation of the color. As I create some of these ink swatches, let's talk about this new Concord and Ninth color release. There are 25 new colors, which adds into what they already have, creating 48 colors in total. This includes ink pads, mini ink cubes, ink refills, cardstock, enamel dots. And I'll show you all of those today. Looking at the ink first, as I mentioned, there are now 48 colors, and their inks are very vibrant dye inks. The pad itself is a firm foam pad, so it's kind of like a sponge, which allows you to put a good amount of ink down each time you stamp. Now this is a brand new ink pad, it's nice and juicy. When I stamp it, it will look dark and maybe splotchy. That is okay. This is one of those dye inks that will smooth and soften with time, giving you nice, solid, crisp results. Another advantage of the Concord and Ninth ink formulation is that I find it does very little staining of stamps. Now some reds like to stain stamps, that's just natural, but overall I find it very easy to clean the stamp, remove the ink, and move on to the next color without having to do any serious cleaning. Another thing I like about these inks is that you can stamp once for a light image and then stamp it again for slightly darker and again for an even darker color and you don't get bleeding with it. So you can layer up your stampings to get more out of one color. And these inks work really well with super light colors. Sometimes dye inks with light colors are tough to get a good image, but these do great. Now I did all of the ink swatches and I thought I would give you a closer look here. You can hit pause if you want to, to get a closer look as I go through these, but this will give you an idea of what these inks stamp like and what they look like once they're dry. You can see they are solid and they are smooth and you have beautiful combinations of colors, which I'll be showing you a bit later. By the way, all of my ink swatches are in coin pocket pages. I find this very handy. This is what I do with all of my inks, and I'll put a source for those below. Now let's take a closer look at these colors, and I'll mention which of the colors are new. But keep in mind, that's all very clear on the website, and I have it linked below. So the new colors include Fig, Briar Rose, Carnation, and Sweet Pea. So all the inks on the top there. Then we also have the new Pink Lemonade and Dragon F Fruit, which is an amazing pink. Then skip down there a few rows and we have cayenne, spice cider, clementine, and nectar. That nectar is gorgeous. On the bottom we have sunflower and honeycomb to round out the yellows. The greens are gorgeous, a nice collection. The new ones are lemongrass, avocado, and artichoke. Below that we have a beautiful pool color called tide pool and then juniper. 
Now for blues, this is awesome because I'm always looking for true blues. We have Powder, Harbor, Blueberry, and that goes nice with the Midnight they have had before. And then we have Lilac and Grape Soda. And for neutrals, we have the addition of the Pebble, which is a great gray, Cobblestone, and then Nutmeg. So this rounds everything out. By the way, the white is a pigment ink. It's the only pigment ink in the bunch. One more thing to note about these inks that I find wonderful, the ink matches the lid of the ink pad very nicely. You can see here that the case is colored just right to match the ink inside. That's not always the case and it is really helpful when it is. And I believe they have stickers to put on the side of the ink pads so you can easily find the color you need. So that's how I like to swatch my inks. Keep in mind, you could do your cardstock the same way. Just cut a color swatch of the uh, cardstock and glue it onto these free downloads. However, I swatch my cardstocks differently and I'm gonna show you that in a moment. But keep in mind, swatching isn't for everyone, but I'll tell you, it is really helpful once you have it done in coming up with fun color combinations. Okay, now that we've covered ink, let's talk about cardstock. I love colored cardstock. It's one of my favorite things in crafting, and I'm really excited by these 48 colors. Again, 25 of them are new. So this is how I create my cardstock swatch book. I do this for all companies. In this case, I used this swatch book die from the die set I showed you earlier. I die cut it from the colors. I didn't need my swatch to be that long, so I cut it to be three inches tall so that my swatch book is a little bit shorter. I will use the full size swatch, that tag, later in this video. But for the single color swatches, I just cut it at three inches. At the same time, I use that die over there on the left to cut, create a bunch of small rectangle die cuts. I love that the one die cuts a bunch at once, saving us time. And then I used the coordinating stamp from the Swatchbook stamp set to stamp the color name on those little rectangles. So in this case, I'm stamping sunflower on the bottom of the tag and on each of these little rectangle swatches. By stamping the color on there on a bunch of these, I will have a handful of these ready to go to create color combination swatches later in this video. This is super handy and I'm thankful that Concord and Ninth has this. For the companies that I don't have a little stamp name for, I will just write them by hand or you could create a clear label. I store my cardstock in clear sleeves. I'll put a link to a video that describes it up here on the top right. And I will put all of these little swatches into a plastic bag and put that in the cardstock sleeve. So whenever I'm ready to make swatches, I'll have those ready to go. So I created these tags for all 48 colors and I have them together on a ring. Now these are between 80 and 100 pounds. They average like 92 pounds, which is nice for card making and they die cut beautifully. Let's take a closer look at the colors. Some new ones we have are Dragon Fruit, Sweet Pea, Carnation, and Briar Rose. Then we have the new Pink Lemonade, and you can see how these all go together very nicely. I have always really liked the Concord and Ninth Peach colors, and now they have the new Light Peach, which is the Nectar color. It goes gr great with the Grapefruit and Sorbet they've had for some time. We have the new Clementine, Spice Cider, and Cayenne. Then we have a few new yellows. We have honeycomb, sunflower. Then we have the green lemongrass, avocado, and artichoke. I appreciate they added more greens because I use sprout and parsley a lot. All these greens are great for florals. All right, now let's move on to the kind of pool colors, the older clover and sea glass. In addition to that, we now have the new juniper and tide pool. I tell you, I could swim in those colors. And then true blue colors. I'm really excited about this. In addition to the older midnight, we have the new blueberry, harbor, and powder, which is a super light blue. For the purples, we have the lilac, fig, and grape soda. And then to finish it off, we have our neutrals. We have the mushroom, which is older, and the dove, which is older. But now we also have a slightly warmer pebble color and cobblestone. For a brown, we have the new nutmeg, which is a nice true dark brown. And the black cardstock is one of my favorites to die cut from. And their white cardstock is, is one of the smoothest on the market. It's great for foiling and ink blending. Love their white cardstock. 
Another thing that Concord and Ninth did with this color release is create color buddies. So different card stocks that go together, like a lighter and a darker color, I'll show some of those later on. But first, I wanted to point out something that is really great, and that is that the ink colors really match the cardstock quite nicely. Here are a few examples. So there we have the artichoke green in the ink, the honeycomb in the ink, and the tide pool in the ink. Now let's grab the cardstocks of the same colors to show you how the inks really match the cardstock nicely. I know this is very important to many people to have cardstocks and inks that match nicely. And there are also the enamel dots, which I'll show you later. But I thought I'd point this out. You have cardstock, inks, and ink lids that all match well. Now that we've looked closely at the colors from Concord and Ninth, let's look at creating some combinations so that we can put these colors to good use. I have started a color combo swatch book. So this is using the swatch book dies and stamp set that I showed you at the beginning of this video. This is the cover of it. I did the black cardstock from Concord and Ninth and white heat embossed the message on there. You can see I have lots of color combination swatches started. Now for the colors on these, I used the cardstock pieces that you saw me create before where I stamped the name on it. You could do your swatches with the inks, but I think the cardstock is faster to use, and I love the cardstocks. So I have a bunch of combos here. Some are just fun combos. Some show cardstock buddies, like a lighter, medium, and dark that go together. And I included all the Concord and Ninth, but I did throw in a few other brand cardstocks, which I'll show you, because it's always fun to combine different companies together. Let's start out by looking at those color buddies. I believe that's what Concord and Ninth is calling like pairs or trios of colors in their collection that work well together, like as a light, medium, and dark. Now I have put together, close together, the combos or the buddies. I put a few combos on some tags just to save room, but you can see you have the light, medium, dark of the purplish pink there, a bright pink on the top left, that kind of coral color there with pink lemonade and honeysuckle. And then the most beautiful combo of all the nectar, grapefruit, and sorbet. Below that we have some other orange combinations. By the way, most of these combinations are ones that Concord and Ninth came up with, but I did throw in a few of my own that I thought worked well together. As for yellows, I sometimes have trouble with yellow cardstock, so I'm really excited about that buttercup, buttercup and sunflower combo. And I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of greens in this collection, and here you can see some that work well together. Lemongrass, avocado, and artichoke, and then we have sprout, parsley, and evergreen. I also like that there are a few different buddy combos that work for like these teal colors, these greenish blue and bluish greens. And you can see how you can mix and match them in different ways and they just seem to work well together. Tide Pool is like a magical color that seems to work with more bluish colors of cardstock or more greenish colors. And then I told you I was excited about this true blue color line. We have the Powder, Harbor, Blueberry, and Midnight. And by the way, one of the reasons I think these kind of buddy combos are important to look at is it's very helpful when you're doing layer die cuts. Layering die cuts sometimes look best with like a light, medium, and dark of a color, and this will help to minimize the searching for what works well together. So to be able to keep track of them in a swatch book is very helpful. Also remember, you can include swatches from other color lines. Here I have Concord and Ninth Sprout and Parsley, and look at that Gina K Designs Jelly Bean works great with them. So go through all of your cardstocks and see which swatches you can use together to create kind of this buddy system. Here we have Hero Arts Paradise, which is nice between Aqua Sky and Oceanside, and Hero Arts Periwinkle, which is nice in between Harbor and Blueberry. And to me, what's even more special about throwing in these Gina K and Hero Arts cardstocks is that Greg from Concord and Ninth, Gina from Gina K Designs, and Aaron from Hero Arts are all good friends. So I think it would make them happy to see their products used together. By the way, that Gina K Coral Reef rounds out that peach color beautifully. So now that I've shown you some buddies that work well together, let's do fun color combinations. And I have some special ones to share with you. 
I want to sh first show you how I create these swatches because it's really easy. The Concord and Ninth swatch book die set that I showed you earlier has these two spacer dies, which helps you to glue down your little swatches evenly spaced. There's a bigger sw uh, spacer die if you want some room to write the ink color right below it or stamp the ink color below it. But I prefer to put the color directly onto that ink swatch. Now I use the smaller spacer to get the uh, lining up just right between them to make them look nice. It's not important, but if you're making a bunch of them, it's nice for them to look nice. So I just put a little temporary adhesive on the back of this narrow spacer that I cut from some scrap cardstock. And I just put it in between each of the swatches as I glue them down, and that will give us even spacing. All of the color combo swatches that I'm making today are using Concord and Ninth cardstock. So I have that nice stamped name there at the center that you saw me make a bunch of earlier in this video. If I include any cardstocks that are not Concord and Ninth, I'll just write them on the color swatch. But again, you could also use a clear label with black printing. I'm going to show you a closer look at all of these fun color combinations along with cards using each of them. I'll do that at the end of this video and I'll show you the special artists who inspired them all. However, first I thought it'd be good to show you what I used for the different cards I'll be showing you later on. So some of the cards are die cut, some are stamped, and some are stenciled. So let's make a few cards and then we'll go through all the combos and talk about what favorite artist and friend came up with them. Now most of the cards you'll be seeing in this video involve die cutting because I love to layer up die cuts and glue them together and create a fun dimensional background. I will be using the brand new Concord and Ninth Triangle Background Die Set. It has this fun background die that creates a faux stitch pattern and two dies there that cut a bunch of triangles that you can cut and glue onto the triangle background. You can see I've already created a bunch of backgrounds from white cardstock, so I have those ready to go. All I need to do is cut a bunch of the little triangles from colors of cardstock. Now it's nice that both of these dies are included in the set so you can quickly cut a bunch of triangles. So I did all of my die cutting and assembly off screen. I love to do this late at night in front of the TV. And you can see I've glued lots of those triangles on using that color combo there to the left. Once I've glued all those triangles on, I can trim the excess off the edge using my Spellbinders Pro Shears. I love these scissors, they're heavy duty and cut through thick layers like butter. Some of these triangle die cuts are glued together four thick, and this has no trouble cutting through it. On all of my cards where I use these triangle dies, some of the triangles are glued four thick and some are just one thick. And by varying that de depth, you get a fun dimensional look to your card. You'll see here as I tilt the card, some of those triangles are popped up more than others. The reason I chose to use this die set is because there are so many different ways you can arrange patterns with these dies and you'll see lots of them later in this video. I will then glue this card panel onto the front of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. Next, it's time to add a sentiment and on most of my cards today, I'm using the new Concord and Ninth Just Say More die set. I am so happy about this die set. I requested from Greg a take care and big hugs sentiment in this style and I'm so glad they did this. It also has hi and celebrate you and lots of hearts. Now these sentiment dies also have the shadow dies so you can layer them up nicely to make them pop out on your card. In most cases, I did the shadow from white cardstock and the words from black and layered them together to add to my card front. On a few of my cards, I also used the older Concord and Ninth Just Saying die set. That one includes several sentiments, including this Just a Note. I had a bunch of these already die cut and glued together, so I did use a few of those. This Just a Note gets a lot of use in my craft room. Now, you may have seen in videos before that I love to do die cutting like this, where I do die cutting from white cardstock and colored cardstock and arrange them together with lots of dimension. Concord and Ninth has a lot of these kind of quilt dies that are similar to the triangle one that I'm using today. I just wanted to mention they have lots of options. You can see a bunch of work in progress cards here. I just wanted to mention that and I will link to these kind of quilt collections below if you want to check them out. 
but today I'm focusing on the triangle background I showed you earlier. Now, in addition to die cut cards, I did create a few stamped cards using these new fun color combinations. And in this case, I'm using a new turnabout stamp and I have a new way to use turnabout stamps. This is the Concord and Ninth Mod Turnabout Stamp. You stamp it once, rotate it, stamp it again, rotate it, and do that four times in four different colors to create a colorful background. I've shown how to use turnabouts many times in videos in the past. I'll link to another option up here on the top right. But a new way to use turnabouts that is the easiest way by far is to use the new all to new stamp wheel. The stamp wheel is a new stamp positioner that can be used for many things. And one of my favorite ways is with a turnabout. Setting it up is easy. I have that clear guide there with the black printing that comes with the turnabout stamp. I am laying my stamp onto the clear guide, lining up the pattern on the guide with the pattern on the stamp. So the stamp is going on here face down. So you can see how it's lined up and stuck to that clear guide. Next, I have the lid for my stamp wheel. Notice that there are the, all of those lines there, making it easy to line up. There's also that X right in the center. What I plan to do here is line up the X at the center of our stamp wheel lid with that big black X on the turnabout stamp guide. This is super easy to do because you have the lines on the stamp wheel lid that'll line up very nicely with those black X lines on our guide. So now I have the stamp stuck to the lid of our stamp wheel. I can remove that guide and we're ready to do some stamping. I will take a piece of cardstock and place it into the stamp wheel. This platform in the center is made from the same material our clear stamps are made of, and it som somewhat sticks to the cardstock and holds it there, which is very handy. Now, when I do a turnabout stamping on the stamp wheel, I like to number my corners so I know the four positions. This bottom uh, position here, the one on the left, the one directly on top, and the one on the right. So basically, east, west, south, and north. These will be the four positions. This first one, I'll put a little one down here. You don't have to do this. I just find it helpful and I'm gonna do a bunch of stamping so I might as well do it. All right, I'll flip my lid over and I haven't used this stamp yet so I will use a dry cloth just to buff it. I know that once the surface of the stamp is somewhat cloudy that it's ready to take the ink. I'll choose my first color of ink and ink up the stamp and then take the lid and flip it over onto our stamp wheel so that one position, that little tape with the one on it, is towards me on the bottom. Then we will just pop it right into place. It fits in like a puzzle piece. It just pops right in place and you'll press it firmly as you would with any stamp platform. Now you could stamp that multiple times if you want in the same position, Remember, this ink will be a little splotchy at first, but it'll dry nicely. Now I've cleaned off my stamp and I'm moving on to the next ink color. This one's Sprout, the last one was Aqua Sky. And I'll take the lid and flip it over onto my stamp wheel. But instead of doing position one, I'm gonna turn it to the next piece of tape, which will be position two. I'll write a two on there so I remember. After stamping this once, I decided that I wanted a darker shade of the Sprout color, so I'm just gonna ink it up and stamp it again in the same position, giving us a slightly darker shade. Once I'm done, I can clean the stamp and move on to my third color of ink, which is Honeysuckle. Now, keep in mind, you do not have to have a stamp wheel to do these turnabout stamps. This is just a new way you can use them that's very easy. So if you have this new all to new stamp wheel and turnabout stamps, I encourage you to try it. You can see how the stamp wheel is very handy when you want to rotate your stamping like you do with turnabout stamps. Again, if you don't have a stamp wheel, I will link up here on the top right on how to use turnabouts easily with other products. All right, so we're on to our fourth and final color. This is Fig. You can see my ink pad is very juicy because it's brand new. I will then flip this over, rotate it to the fourth position, and press that down. So now I have this stamp wheel set up with the stamp so I can stamp a bunch of backgrounds in different color combinations, which I'll do off screen and I will share those combinations later in this video. 
By the way, here's another one I just did the turnabout with. You can see the color combo there on the right. This is how dark the inks look at first. I just stamped it. But let me show you what it looks like when that ink is dried and settled. You can see it over there on the right, how beautiful it is and how it matches the cardstock swatches nicely. And there are a few other color combos I did with the turnabout. Again, these cards will be in this video later on. Okay, so we covered die cutting, we've covered some stamping. Now let's talk about stencils. I feel like Concord and Ninth inks are beautiful for stenciling. It's really easy to put that color down and blend. I'm using the new Concord and Ninth Flower Press stencil set. I believe there are four layering stencils in this and they line up nicely. And I'm using that fun color combination there of reds, purples, and black. Now I'm using my waffle flower stencil mat and putting my cardstock in the corner of it and my stencil in the corner of it. Each time if I put my cardstock and stencil in the corner, I know it'll line up. I first put down a light lilac and then I put some grape soda on the little berries and towards the center of those flowers just for a little variation. We have some poppy here. These inks blend beautifully, especially on the Concord and Ninth white cardstock, which is super smooth. And I've started to use recently for blending and foiling. So I'm just quickly going through these just to show you that you can blend nicely with these inks, especially because they're the type of inks that smooth out over time, which makes them really good for blending. Okay, so after doing all four stencils here with those four colors, we have this bold, colorful background that we were able to create quickly. I love this stencil set, but I only used it for this one card in this video, but I will definitely use it again in the future. Okay, so now I have shown you all of the colors, a few of the different products that I'm going to use for my cards. Now it's time to look at the cards and the fun color combos from some of my artist friends. So when this color uh, release came out, I asked Greg over at Concord and Ninth if I could reach out to some of my favorite artists and ask them to share with me their favorite color combo from all of the Concord and Ninth colors. They came back with their favorite combos of four to six colors of inks, and I am using those combos to make cards. I will first show you my card and the color combo. Then I will show you the artist who came up with that color combo, giving you a little time to try to guess. Okay, so here is our first card and color combo. I love the colors here, but what's especially great about this combo is that it has buddies. There are the two pinks that go together, the two buddy peaches that go together, and the two yellows that go together. That is kind of a trademark color combo of the color queen herself. This color combo is from Laura Basson over at laurafedora.com. Laura always comes up with the best color combinations and I've noticed she usually uses buddies, like two of the same color but different shades to pull her combos together. Okay, now a completely different looking card. This one is using the turnabout stamp set I showed you earlier, and it's using several of the neutrals. So I stamped the Dove, Mushroom, Cobblestone, and Wheat for the four colors on the turnabout, and then I did the Papa Black for the sentiment. And this one is from none other than Tim Holtz. He is the master of using neutrals, and I probably never would have put this combo together if he wouldn't have suggested it, and I Love it. I plan to make more with this combo using the dyes also. Next up, we have some purples, blues, and greens together. This is a combo that I probably would never have come up with on my own. I tend to stay with obvious color combos, and that's why I think it's good to look at other artists for inspiration. This beautiful combo is from another queen. This is Kathy Zilski, a dear friend of mine who is amazing with color and simple card designs. Be sure to check out the video she puts up today also because she uses this same color combo in it. I will have a link to her website and all of the other artists' websites in my description below. I encourage you to follow them all. Next up, we have a color combination that is so comfortable for me. I love these colors. Any pool colors with a splash of green and gray is right up my alley. In fact, this card would match the inside of my house very nicely. But that black there is a trademark touch that Gina K Designs likes to add in her cards. If you watch her videos, which I encourage you to do so, they're amazing. She often uses a thin black mat on her cards for a touch of black and it always looks great. 
Keep in mind, Gina has her own line of cardstocks and inks that match. I showed a few before. They work really well with the Concord and Ninth line. And I like to use the two lines together because Gina and Greg are good friends. Okay, now I have another stamped background using that turnabout. And this is a bright, happy card. I kept it very simple. All I did was add the uh, big hugs onto the stamped background. This bright color is from one of my most cheerful friends, and that is Heidi. She is the owner of Simon Says Stamp. If you've ever met si Heidi, you know she is a ball of energy and just adds a lot of brightness into this world, and this color combo represents her well. Now this card I covered completely with the colored triangles, making some thicker than others. And I love that background so much. And this color combo is amazing. Another one that I probably wouldn't have put together myself, but I have fallen in love with. And this beauty, this beautiful color combination is from Jeff Lindbergh. He is one of my favorite dude crafters and a good friend of mine. His home is actually decorated in these same colors. And I love that that is represented in the color scheme that he came up with. I encourage you to follow him. He is another bright spot in this crafting world. For this next card, I took three of the colors and kind of made that my background, the fig, lilac, and powder. Then I took the other two colors, buttercup and dove, and just kind of scattered it over it. So those were just little touches on it or embellishment colors, you could say. Now this fun color combo that I never would have come up with myself once again, but I love so dearly is from Christina Werner. I love that picture of us. I went to her house last weekend and it just shows you how much taller she is than me. Christina is a graphic designer, so she has an excellent eye for color and putting colors together in amazing ways like this one. Next up, we have a bold rainbow, but you could use more of the pinks and yellows and make it like a sunset feel or use more of the blues and purples and make it more of a night sky feel. So many ways you can use it. And this one is from Simon Hurley. Simon is another good friend of mine who comes up with some really great techniques. I encourage you to watch his videos. And he's not afraid to play with color. And that's why I really like this bold color combo. I'm also loving this beautiful ocean inspired color combination. These blues and greens remind me of my favorite vacations. And I think this color combo could be used for a variety of occasions. This combo came from none other than Jen Shirkus, who is known for loving mermaids. So I wasn't surprised when she came up with it, and I love it so much. You can even notice in her photo there, she's got a rainbow in the background that matches the color combo. Next up, we have this bold stenciled background that I made earlier. I kept it very simple. Just have the stenciled background, the sentiment glued to a note card. Now this bold and unusual color combination is from Kathy Rakusen, who is the queen of coloring. Her coloring is amazing and she is great at coming up with color combos that are unusual. This one, she was inspired by a plaid piece of clothing she saw in a magazine and that's how she came up with it. Looking at catalogs is another great way to come up with combos. And by the way, you don't have to remember all of these combos. I have photos of the cards and combos over on my blog. Okay, here we have another fun rainbow. I love how the colors are kind of like a sherbety rainbow color, but then there's that pop of fig in there. Now this beautiful rainbow is from one of my new favorite artists. Her name is Tisa Jackson. She's over on thisistisa.com. I encourage you to follow her Instagram. She does all these amazing rainbow bling projects. She's got a little shop. I am obsessed with her work and this color combo is a beauty. Okay, here is our next color combo. Now in this case, I have some fun bright colors, but I picked one of the colors to be kind of the main color, and that is that blueberry. This is another fun way to use a color combo. You don't have to use all of the colors equally. Now this combo is from my dear friend, Aaron. That's him on the right, and that's Greg from Concord and Knight there in the center. Aaron owns Hero Arts. He is, um, I guess, the, the uh, trailblazer for all stamp companies as Hero Arts has been around for over 40 years. Aaron and Greg are very good friends and work well together, as do their colors of cardstocks and inks. I showed you an example of that before. So Hero Arts does have ink and cardstock that works great with the Concord and Ninth. 
All right, next up, I have a fun, unusual color combination that I am crazy about. On this one, I decided to add a few of the Concord and Ninth enamel dots. I just got them this weekend, so I was only able to include it on one card here. But know there is a pack of uh, enamel dots to match all 48 of the colors in the Concord and Ninth release. I'm crazy about this color combo, and it comes from my friend Liz from Encourage Co. She's actually uh, the graphic designer who helps me with my work and a dear friend. I encourage you to go to her website because she has a lot of beautiful kind of neutral uh, color palettes like this one that are very inspiring. Now this one here, this is another color combo I never would have come up with and I really like. It's fun and unexpected. Great for a springtime card. And this one is actually from my brother. He goes by Not So Crafty Mike. He works with me and he is not crafty, but apparently he is good at coming up with color combos. Maybe this is a sign that he should start crafting. By the way, that's him there with my son and my daughter. Okay, next we have a very soft color palette. A lot of these cards today are nice and bold, but keep in mind there are soft colors in the collection. The Grapefruit and Nectar and the Aqua Sky and Tide Pool are four of my favorites. And that pebble there in the middle creates a nice spot for that bold sentiment. Now this color combo, this one's for me. As soon as I saw the Nectar and Tide Pool, I knew that this color combo was one that I needed to try. Here is another fun combo, and look how well the ink on the background matches the cardstock swatch. And again, great match. This combo is from me. I'm excited about those true blue colors, and they look great with those kind of peachy sorbet and grapefruit colors. Here is another soft color palette. Now this one isn't a rainbow, but you can kind of put them in rainbow order and give a nice blend. So you can see I'm going from the peaches at the top to the pools along the bottom. And this is another color combo for me. I am crazy about those pools and peaches. And earlier I threw in a gray color. This time I threw in that sprout green color. I have one more color combination that I came up with. In this case, I included that fig color. I'm really liking that kind of plum color. That uh, rose color goes nicely with the fig. That plum color is something that works well with a lot of other colors. Here I put it with that kind of greenish blue sea glass and juniper. Can't get enough of it. And I'm so glad that kind of plum fig color is included in this color release. Okay, here is our next color combo, and this ended up being my favorite card of all of them. I liked having those uh, triangles right down the center, and this color combo is super happy. And this one is from none other than Lila, my 10-year-old. I showed her all of the Concord and Ninth colors. She had a hard time deciding, but she ended up with this beautiful combo that is great for any kind of spring card. And last but not least, probably the most special of all the color combos is this one. It's similar to the one I did before, which I think is funny because we came up with something very similar. And in this one, I did a fun diamond pattern by offsetting the triangles that I glued onto the background. Now, this beautiful color combination is from Greg himself. Greg owns Concord and Ninth, and he's responsible for all of these beautiful colors. So I decided to save him for the last example. I really hope you were inspired by all of these fun color combinations that my favorite artists and friends came up with. A big thanks to all of them. Be sure to check out their websites. I have them all linked below. Get a closer look at what they all have to offer. I hope that this video is helpful in getting a closer look at this Concord and Ninth release, but also just gives you inspiration for coming up with new color combo swatches and more. If you're interested in the products that I share today, they are linked below in my YouTube description. Head over to my blog where I have photos of all of these color combinations and cards, and I have a couple other related videos here at the end. Thanks for spending this time with me. Have a wonderful day.